Hello everybody, I'm here to read the next couple of chapters of Kringle Cracks. So the last time that we read, Elvis had been sleepwalking again. He'd walked all the way down the street in his sleep and he had destroyed Dr. Flower's uh, flower beds. So let's find out what happens now with the Kringle Cracks. Does it appear? What happens with the school play? Does Elvis really get to be the hero? And what happens with Corky? Hmm. Chapter 19. The next morning in school, rehearsal started on the play, Young Hal Oaktree. Hal Oaktree is the name of the hero. Elvis, holding a plastic sword and shield and clutching his football under his arm, stood in front of the cardboard and chicken wire dragon. Mr Lace watched from behind the piano. All right, Mr Lace said, begin your speech, Elvis. Elvis took a deep breath. Oh, you terrible monster, Elvis began in a voice that, despite being loud and thunderous, was flat and emotionless. You scary thing of, you scary thing of the, the, Elvis had forgotten his lines. Dark, prompted Mr. Lay. Dark, Elvis exclaimed. You scary thing of the dark. You will scare us. No, no. Elvis had forgotten his lines again. No more, Mr. Lace prompted. No more, Elvis exclaimed. You will scare us. No more. I am not, not afraid, Mr. Lace prompted. Afraid, Elvis exclaimed. I am not afraid. I, I. Elvis's voice trailed into silence. Mr. Lace came out from behind the piano. Oh, well, he said to Elvis, you'll be all right once you've learned the lines, I suppose. Elvis put down his sword and shield and started bouncing the ball. Da boing, da boing. I'm gonna be the best actor in the world, Elvis said. Yes, Mr. Lace said, sucking a pencil. The whole class thinks that, don't we, class? Everyone in the class said, yes, Mr. Lace. Everyone, except Ruskin, that is. Ruskin didn't say yes, Elvis said. Mr. Lace looked at Ruskin. Oh, but I'm sure he meant to say yes, Mr. Lace said. Didn't you mean to say yes, Ruskin? No, Ruskin replied, I didn't. You didn't, Mr. Lace said. No, Ruskin said. I think Elvis is the worst actor I've ever seen. He's just saying the words, but he's not feeling anything. I didn't believe a word of it. Silence. Mr. Lace stared at Ruskin. Elvis bounced the ball. Da boing. What's more, Ruskin continued, he doesn't know how to hold a shield and sword properly. Oh dear, Mr. Lace said. Da boing. And he doesn't know how to breathe properly, Ruskin continued. Oh dear, said Mr. Lace. Elvis was trembling with anger now. Da boing, da boing. And he doesn't speak properly, Ruskin said. The sound of the bouncing ball got louder and louder. Da boing, da boing. And, Ruskin continued, he wasn't no good acting if it were a taffeta dress and stood on a desk screaming, I'm good acting. Da boing. The ball bounced up to the ceiling struck a light bulb and went straight through a window. Smash went the window. Elvis pointed at Ruskin and growled. You're not going to get away with that, you silly little splinter. I'm going to smash your living room windows, your bathroom windows, your hallway windows. I'm even going to smash the glass in your silly glasses. I'm going to smash so much glass around you. You're not going to be able to walk without crunching. Now, now said Mr Lace, trying to calm Elvis down. No need to get offensive. <laughs> Shakespeare, Elvis snapped. Tears came into Mr Lace's eyes. Oh, that wondrous name, Mr Lace said. Mr Lace said, the bard of all time. Shakespeare, said Elvis. Mr Lace fell to his knees. Oh, the joy of the thought, he said, wiping tears from his eyes. The fountains of emotion contained in that single name. Shakespeare, 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 Elvis continued. Mr Lace was lying on his back on the floor now, 
Weeping so much, his scarf had become soggy with tears. I'm going to get my football now, Elvis said, suddenly tired of tormenting Mr Lace. Elvis left the classroom. Chapter 20. I don't think Elvis is a very, uh, very nice boy. He's not taking working in a team very well, is he? Right, chapter 20. After school, Ruskin helped Corky sweep up the broken glass from the school playground. Before long, Corky said, Lizard Street won't be called Lizard Street anymore. It will be known as the Street of Broken Windows. Ruskin told Corky how Elvis had threatened to break his glasses as well as all his windows. Are you scared, my boy? Corky asked, sweeping the glass into a neat pile. A little bit, Ruskin replied, brushing the glass into a bin bag. Well, there's nothing wrong with being scared, Corky said, picking up the bag. We all get scared sometimes. They took the bag over to a big metal bin and threw it inside. Come on, my boy, Corky said. Let's forget all about Elvis and his bad acting and his ball and his glass smashing threats. Let's go and see the film at Flick's Rick. Would you like that? Yes, please, Ruskin said, and we'll buy some biscuits on the way. So they bought a packet of chocolate biscuits at Mrs Walnut's shop and went to the cinema. They sat in the front row. The cinema was dark and smelt of popcorn. The seats were covered with green velvet and there was a bright green curtain in front of the screen. Corky opened the biscuits and offered one to Ruskin. I hope people don't talk during the film, Corky said. I think that's a terrible thing to do. The green curtains parted and the screen exploded with light. Ruskin tingled with excitement. He reached out for a biscuit. The film was called Henry V and was in black and white. It was very exciting. Ruskin loved the charging horses and the whooshing sound the arrows made as they flew through the air. Suddenly, Ruskin heard another noise. It was coming from the back of the cinema. The boing went the noise. Ruskin looked behind him and saw Elvis Cave sitting next to Sparky Walnut. The two of them were laughing and giggling and jeering at the film. Elvis was bouncing his football. Shh, Ruskin said. Free country, Elvis said, can do what I like. Can't I, Sparky? Yes, sir, said Sparky. Corky turned around and waved his walking stick at Elvis and Sparky. It's bad manners. Corky said. The boing was the only reply. Ruskin and Corky faced the front again and tried to enjoy the film, but all they could hear was the relentless de boing of Elvis's football. Mr Flick walked down the aisle holding a torch. The beam cut a neat white line through the dark like an electric finger. He pointed it at Elvis. Please be quiet, Mr Flick said straightening his bow tie. This is such a good film. Can't you hear the wonderful language? It's not English, Elvis complained. I don't understand a word of it. It's all rubbish. Right, Sparky? Yes, sir, Sparky said. But it is English, Mr Flick said. It's the most wonderful English. It's by Shakespeare. Well, then Shakespeare can't write, Elvis sneered. Mr Flick looked shocked. And it's boring. Elvis continued, standing up. He started to walk down the aisle towards the screen, bouncing the ball in front of him. Lots of silly actors in silly costumes and saying a silly old load of twaddle, Elvis said. Da boing, da boing. Please, Mr Flick said. Is this what you call good acting? Elvis said, looking at Ruskin. Well, you're an idiot. I'm a better actor than all those silly idiots up there and he bounced to the ball as hard as he could. The ball shot into the air and ripped through the screen. A large black hole appeared where the actor's head should have been. Elvis screamed with laughter. Sparky screamed with laughter too. Mr Flick just screamed. Elvis and Sparky ran out of the cinema and Mr Flick stopped the film and turned the lights on. My poor scream said Mr Flick, running his fingers up and down his black velvet lapels. Now I won't be able to show any more films. Elvis's football is smashing everything in sight, Corky said. Everyone in Lizard Street spends most of their time sweeping up broken glass. He's such a wild boy. Someone's got to do something, said Mr Flick. I can't go on like this. Elvis is terrorising everybody, even his own mum and dad, and no one seems prepared to do anything. 
come on, my boy, said Corky, putting his arm round Ruskin's shoulder. Let's go home. Let's see, I'll do chapter 21 as well then. Elvis really isn't turning out to be a very nice boy. I don't think I'd like him in my classroom. Chapter 21. It was late evening now and the sun was setting, turning the sky bright red and yellow with a few glimmering stars visible. Corky, Rusky said, are the actors in that film still alive? Some of them are, Corky replied, and some of them aren't. I want to live for always, Ruskin said. No one lives for always, Corky said. We just live for little whiles at a time. Corky stopped outside his front door and watched Ruskin walk the rest of the way home. Ruskin stood on a metal drain in front of his house. Ka-clunk, went the drain. Ruskin turned to wave at Corky. A breeze blew down Lizard Street. Eek, went the pub sign. Corky waved back. Ka-clunk, went the drain. Ruskin went indoors. His mum and dad were eating toast and watching television. Kiss, said Wendy. Ruskin kissed her cheek. Tea, asked Wendy. Yes, please, replied Ruskin. Poached egg on toast? Yes, please. Later, after Wendy and Ruskin had gone to bed, Winston sat up drinking cans of lager. He was still sitting up and staring at the television set when all the programmes had gone off and there was nothing on the screen but a grey fuzz. Upstairs in his room, Ruskin, who had been reading, could hear the telly buzzing and fuzzing. He knew that his dad had got drunk, as this happened quite often, so he went downstairs. Come on, Dad, said Ruskin, shaking Winston. Time for bed. Usually, this was all Ruskin had to do. Shake his dad, take the lager from his hand and say, time for bed. And Winston would obediently stand up, mutter, it's not my fault, a few times and go up to his room. But tonight was different because as Ruskin took the lager from his dad's hand, Winston said, the crocodile. Ruskin stared at his dad. Again, Winston said, the crocodile. There he is. Ruskin shook him. What crocodile, Dad? asked Rusty. Ruskin. The one I took, mumbled Winston. Took from where, Dad? From the zoo. Winston continued to talk in his drunken sleep. And so it was that Ruskin learned why his dad had been sacked from his job as a zookeeper and how the baby crocodile that bit Corky's knee and grew to become Crindlecracks got into the sewer in the first place. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. Well, I didn't see that one coming. Tune in tomorrow to find out just how Winston or why Winston decided to do that. Bye, everybody.